Today we have the Furman RV1 and RV2 uh, reverberation systems. I should mention I'm not a keyboard player. Internet sensation J. <laughs> superstar. Superstar. Internet superstar. All right, should we talk about this? Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Okay, break it, break it down. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pixel Pro Audio's Unfiltered. I'm Tay. This is David, and that is Jay. We have another vintage spotlight today. We have the Furman Sound RV1 and RV2 reverberation system. We're going to get into sound samples really quickly, and then we'll come back and talk about what's inside this thing. We'll open it up for you. Show you the uh, guts. Show you the guts and the springs. Uh, so, But first, let's play around this thing. All right, guys, we got the RV1 hooked up, the Furman... Uh, reverberation system. So we got the Alesis Micron uh, going right into the uh, reverberation system, the RV1, and then it's going into the interface. Uh, and so we're just going to play around with it. Um, yeah. so, so Jay, Jay's playing keys, and then I'll be playing with the reverb. I turn the reverb all the way down, so that now we just have dry a Micron. Okay. Let's uh, Let's hear that a little bit. All right, cranking up the reverb. Can we try a couple of quick stabs, like, without, turn, turn the reverb down again. Okay, now I can hear it better. There you go. Okay. I'm going to play with the EQ now. So we've got a good mix. Well, it's direct levels all the way and re um, reverb levels all the way up. So I'm going to play with the... EQ so we can hear the reverb a little bit more. Okay. Do some stabs, Jay. Can you crank it? Crank them? Just crank it. You got lots of noise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, back it off a little bit yeah. there. Do that mid-range. Crank that mid-range up on the, on the left there. Yeah, that one. That's, just, that's sweeping it. Okay. Now, Jay, you changed the sound, right? Yeah, turn the reverb off once. Okay. Oh, that's boring without it. <laughs> wow. It, it gives it that classic sound. Yeah. It does sound good, doesn't it? Yeah. I really like this. I'm surprised at how much I like this. So keep playing it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn down the direct level and keep the reverb all the way up. I'm going to turn up the input level now. So we hit the built-in limiter. Distorting. <laughs> That's cool. So when we hit the limiter, you hear more of that spring like type sound. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm liking this thing a lot more than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Me too. I'm having fun with it. Yeah. I think, I think actually, I think David's blown away because he's never been like, eh, he's always been, eh. Yeah, I, I, it's I, great. I have never liked these, but I am extremely impressed. So I don't know if you can hear that, but like the little bit of the spring that hits at like when, when Jay hits the, the each note, it adds a little bit of attack to the notes too. It's very subtle, but it, it's it's really effective. Take a listen. <laughs> Do you hear that? How there's just a little bit more attack to it. I mean, th this patch has a lot of attack already, but. should mention i'm not a keyboard player <laughs> but he's doing a fantastic job yeah internet sensation jay <laughs> superstar superstar internet superstar
Oh, let's find a different patch here. What? Okay. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Alright, reverb was all the way down. I'll dial it in. running out of things to play if you haven't noticed <laughs> yeah, you can play the same thing it's fine <clears throat> it's really cool like creepy circus I just think it's so cool. Like you could use this for so much, you know. It's yeah. it's it's just a fun spring reverb. I think. Keep playing yeah. that one. We're gonna hit the limiter pretty hard, and then we'll okay. just see how that sounds. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Got the little squish in there. Yeah. Squish. Squish. I mean, even, okay, like I'm going to play just a chord. Now you sweep around with what you were just doing there and listen to what it's doing. Sweep the, sweep the EQ a little bit. <laughs> so we get some noise. Yeah. Listen to that. Listen yeah, to that. Yeah, like the harmonics are coming through. Isn't that cool? That's just the EQ, right? Yeah. Now mess with the uh, the input level. I like this one with tons of reverb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, this is really cool. Just it surprisingly like changes the sound a lot. Yeah. All right, should we talk about this? Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Okay, break it, break it down. All right, guys, we're we're back on the drum here. We have the RV2 uh, reverberation system in it's just, front of us. Yeah, it's a stereo version of the RV1 that we were mm -hmm. using for the sa sound samples, the sound samples. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I've always liked them. I love them when we see them come in, and when we were playing around with it, I think it just uh, kind of just solidifies it for me that these things are cool as a hardware piece. You can use them. Um, you don't need a plug-in for reverb, like, you, you know, to, to get a sound like that. A unique sound. Yeah, I've I've messed with these before when we've gotten them in, and you know I thought they were okay, but this really changed my opinion of it. Playing like a keyboard through it, it just it it sounded so cool. I thought. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I test every single one of these that comes in, and I I've always hated them because I <laughs> test them with a drum machine. Brutal. But yep. man, I, yep. That, and that's how I messed with the two. Yeah. I hit it play on a drum machine and just noodled around. With and it. it just sounds terrible because it's a sixteen bit drum machine. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if I'd use this for drums, but. I don't know. When we were playing with it, I was blown away. Like it brought in wow. all these like cool, colorful um, overtones to things. Mm -hmm. Like when we were yeah. messing with some of the EQ knobs, especially the mid EQ. Yeah, that really surprised me. Yeah, and it, to me, it it almost pairs best with a synthesizer. Oh yeah, I absolutely. think that that's maybe the best use for this. Yeah. So inside, there's literal springs, yep. right? Yes. And is the is the music going through that or how can do you guys know how it yeah, works? Yeah, it it sends the the sound into the spring basically and reverberates the spring and then there's a pickup on the other end okay. that picks up the sound. So this is like a guitar uh, fundamentals here like you're hitting a string that's vibrating and it's yes. picking up that sound reverberation. And speaking of right? guitars, that's where you normally see spring reverbs is in guitar amps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, should we open this up? Sure. Yeah, let's check this out. So we have our springs here. You can see they're all jangling around. You could actually, I should put my mic, we should put a microphone up to that. So then on one end, we have, I don't know which is which, we've got transducers on both ends. You know, one end is sending signal to, um, to the springs and vibrating the springs. 
then the other end is picking up that vibration. Um, and you can see the cables go here. So we've got, th this is exactly what an RV1 looks like. It just doubled up. So underneath this spring, re totally reversed, yeah, we've that's got another cool. spring. And then we've got two PCBs here. That's exactly the RV1. See, you can see here, RV1 and two uh, PCB. So it's just the same exact thing, um, but stacked. And then on the RV2, we should also note that this has an external power supply. Right. And that really helps with noise. That's the one thing I didn't like about the RV1. Yeah, should we sit back down and talk again? So on the RV2, uh, it has a, a an external power, power supply. That's the one thing I didn't like about the RV1 is that it had an internal one, and that causes a lot of noise. So I, I think having one on the outside is a good idea for this. The RV2 is, uh, this one's very rare. Yeah, I was going to ask you, have you seen one before ever? Yeah, this is the first time we've ever had one come through. I mean, you do see them come up for, sa for sale from mm -hmm. time to time, but they're very rare. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I I agree, like this external uh, power adapter is big cause, because just the nature of a spring reverb, it, it's picking up, you know, things with a, with a pickup yeah. in there. And so if you've got transformers humming and you, you just get all those electronics in there and it just adds noise. And one of the knocks against these things is that they're noisy yeah. and they are, they're all noisy though. All spring reverbs are noisy. A lot of people get them and they're like, uh, it's really noisy. It's not mm -hmm. working right. But no, it's, that's just the nature of these things. They're noisy. And we heard that when we boosted the treble on the RV one, yeah. once it got past nine, it was like just, eh, constant. But that's, that's part of what you're going to be. If you're going to buy one of these, that's part of what you're getting. You're gonna you're buying that noisy character. Yeah. You probably like that if you're buying it, and sure. you, hopefully you know what you're getting into. Maybe yeah. subtlety is an art form with these things. Using it just in the right manner, not cranking it, and I don't know, man. Nuts. It's not I a like pretty cool crank. crank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really like this thing. I I'm blown away at how much I like one of these, and I, I really want to get one honestly. Now, what would you call this? A, a manual reverb, or what? What do you you know? Analog, like analog uh, reverb, yeah. spring reverb. Because yeah. there's a ton of reverbs out there that have been for decades now. Mm -hmm. a, a digital reverbs. Yep. Now, why would you necessarily get one of these over something else? Be because of what you just heard. I've never heard anybody be able to do some of those creamy, mid-rangey, awesome, yeah. colorful sounds that we did with this, okay. with a digital reverb. There yeah. are lots of digital spring re reverbs. They don't do this. They just don't. And I think the reason for that is because the spring reacts differently to different sounds. So you can only emulate so much in how a spring is going to react digitally. But if you just right, mic it's it a up. That's a complicated thing. Like when you think of the physics of what's going on with the, with the spring, that's a very complicated set of parameters and yeah. and that you I mean that's the other cool thing about spring reverb is everyone's going to sound a little bit different mm -hmm. from model to model even just because of the springs <laughs> right right their age and um yeah. not everything around it now they've made these things big before <clears throat> there's they're called plate reverbs right there's, there's well that's a different thing but yeah. it's in the it's in this family of an okay. analog reverb and yes th and that's a huge unit using the same concept with with giant springs yep you're, yeah. you're it's the exact same concept instead of rattling or vibrating springs you're rattling a plate vibrating like a plate this. like that okay and it's mic'd up so, and, so yeah, you okay. put like a, a transducer on one side and it vibrates it and then there's a pickup on the other side yeah okay. and plate reverbs are notoriously noisy too you usually have to but build they them great they sound cool yeah you usually have to build a big enclosure for them and put them in a room away from your sound source because they'll they'll pick up the vibrations as you're mixing you know like they're <laughs> it's a big Wow. Plate that vibrates. And then they made big uh, spring reverbs too, like in these big cabinets. AKG had the most famous one. It's a giant spring, and uh, they're, they're going for like six grand <laughs> on, on uh, like reverb and stuff. So, so. Do, you, do you think there's a place for this in someone's studio for hardware gear? Yeah. I would put it in my studio. If Absolutely. I would, if I was a synth guy especially, I would definitely want to have okay. one of these. It it's just cool. adds that yeah. like depth and <coughs> warmth and real mm -hmm. realism yeah. to the sound. Huh? And I think, so like we heard the, that uh, we, it had a little bit more attack when I drove the input, hit the limiter a little bit. One thing I would use this on is a drum room. Okay. I would turn the direct level all the way down. I'd probably do a mult from a drum room mic. And then I would hit the, the spring pretty hard, get that attacky... What would you call it? Like a swoosh or something? Swish. Yeah. yeah. Squish. Squish. Yeah. Squish. Yeah. And then um, I would just blend that in with the, the drum room reverb and the, the drum room mics. And I don't know. I can see that being really cool. Mm -hmm. This whole reverb just sounded very three-dimensional to me. Yeah. 
Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think of this. If you have one, if you had a plate reverb versus uh, you know any of these Furman units, uh, please comment below and tell us um, what you think of that. And, and would you get one based on like hearing this? Because you know, not, I, I would guess that not a lot of people have heard this before um, and have gotten their hands on them before. Yeah. And maybe it's some like a relic, you know, of lost time. <laughs> you know, like no one. Why, why would you uh, get your hands on this or whatever? So like. I'm interested in seeing what you guys think about this um, and would you add it to your gear collection. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you around the drum next time. Only the lonely. Deathly afraid. Can we sing this episode? No. Sing the whole time. No. What do you think of the firm and reverberation system? Please don't do that. <laughs> yep. So yes, then? No. Noodle. <laughs> I couldn't All think right. of the word, so noodles yeah. seem like you, you guys would get on a song. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> Something was missing. Yeah, what are, what are the patches? Gonna, can you dial in? A little spring action. I don't know. It's cool. Yeah, I was far more impressed with it than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Next patch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's pick a different patch here. I gave him a point just like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm emulating you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should we try that again. <laughs> oh. Wait, so yeah, buddy. try that again quick. <laughs> emulating digitally. Okay. <clears throat> With limiter. <laughs> <laughs>